now that I've got all the time in the world, I can actually afford to dig through my archive and find unedited footage. And it occurs to me, I never actually put this video together for how to replace a cooktop. So here we are. Back in my first home, as part of the kitchen upgrade, we replaced the cooktop. This glorious 90s cooktop. And you know, it works fine. Like many old appliances, it seems to be invincible. But I have a few gripes with it. The button layout is weird. The Gunga gets trapped right here in the slip. Every time I try to clean this off, I <laughs> stuff Gunga into the lip, which is quite annoying. But anyways, I'm grateful to its 24 years of trouble-free service. Built in 1996, can you believe that? Well, they don't make them like they used to. Regardless, I went to my local Sears that was permanently shutting its doors and managed to snag this GE Radiant for something like $400. And y'all know me, I'm so cheap! That was great, that was a good deal. We'll kick this party off by killing the breakers governing this cooktop. Crank it and make sure it doesn't turn on anymore. But we will ensure there's no voltage with a multimeter, and these are the tools we hope we will need in this project. In my case, right below the cooktop is a junction box. Remove the panel to reveal the wiring. Word of caution, you'll find 220 volts here, so... Please exercise caution and do not have an electrifying experience leading right up to the pearly gates. Turn your multimeter to AC voltage and check to make sure between the hot wire and ground, and remember, both the red and the black are hot, both should be reading zero. To get the lock nut off of the cable, just beat it with a flathead screwdriver and it should come off. Not all cooktops are mounted the same. So you may have some kind of clamps holding yours in, but in my case, nothing was holding this. So I was just able to push it down from the bottom and remove the whole cooktop right after I disconnected the cabling from the power supply. And look at all that glorious Gunga. That's 24 years of Gunga. Next up is a quirk of this house. Because grounding standards just weren't the same back when this house was built, this junction box did not come with a green ground wire. But because the new cooktop requires only a red wire, a black wire, and a green wire, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the white wire, which is usually neutral, and I'm going to turn it into a ground wire. I did this by first applying green tape to it. You have to mark it accordingly. And to be thorough, I also gave it a little flag label and labeled it earth ground. But we're not done yet with that wire. Just because we wrapped it in tape does not make it a ground, so bear with me. We'll get to that in a bit. Here I'm applying rubber stripping that the manual called out for for the new cooktop. It's basically this one-sided rubber tape that you apply to the perimeter of the cooktop. Probably offers some kind of protection and so that it doesn't get put down on a hard surface and in an inadvertently uh, crack the glass cooktop. And now comes the fun part. Assuming you made your measurements correct and the whole size is the same, this should have no business giving you any trouble at all. But trouble it gave me. Although it technically fits, the hole was too large and as you can sort of see here, there's way too much wiggle room for the cooktop. And so what I had to do was I built up a frame made up of 1x2 furring strips. And the goal was to make this cutout just small enough so that there's no more wiggle room for the cooktop. And theoretically that's not too difficult. But sadly, the furring strips themselves were too thick. So I was stuck between slightly too large and slightly too small. And here we go. It's party time. I basically sanded the furring strips over and over until I got just the right dimensions. This was unfortunately the most time-consuming part of the project. But you know, things just aren't perfect. After going through the song and dance for what felt like several hours, I finally got the satisfaction of dropping it in and it being a perfect fit. Mm -mm. 
almost as good as peeling the clear plastic off of a screen. Yeah. Next, I went down below again to move the junction box. I did that because the cable comes out of the opposite end in this new cooktop as opposed to the old one. So I just moved the junction box to a stud to the left to bring it closer to this new cable. And I also rotated at 90 degrees. If this is something you have to do, be sure to give it a hearty tug to make sure that you hit a stud and not just drywall. Next, I fished the cable through to this new junction box, and I believe I used a three-quarter inch sized cable clamp with a correspondingly sized three-quarter inch knockout in this junction box. Using my meat hammer here, I, um, that's how I tighten the block nut for the cable clamp. Next, a light amount of wiring. We join black and black with a wire nut, red and red, and green and green. And this probably isn't necessary, but I'm anal retentive and I like to create a little extra cushion of safety by wrapping the wire nuts in electrical tape for extra insulation. And to keep things clean up top here, I installed a cable clamp to route the cabling. Don't forget to put the junction box cover back on. You may need to encourage a few errant wires to get back in there. And that's pretty much the finished product. Now, if you remember, we weren't done with that green wire. The reason I said that is because we'll have to do the same thing at our breaker panel. Once again, I warn you, everything here is live. So my task here is to locate the same wire that I taped in green tape up top. The way I did that was by locating the breaker for the cooktop, tracing back to which cable these wires go to, and then just finding the white wire. Once I did that, I fished the white wire out so that I could wrap it in green tape and effectively turn it into a ground wire. And I guess I was also meant to fix this loose wire. And again, because of the age of this house, both neutral and ground wires all go to the same place. This isn't a problem in and of itself, but should an upgrade ever take place, I'm leaving this behind for any future electrician so that they don't get confused. Either way, hopefully you don't have to do this, but if you do, there we are. Turn the breaker back on, and now it's time to clean. Yes, this is a brand new cooktop. I wouldn't dare turn it on before it was nice and pristine. Assuming nothing blew up, let's try it out. This is also a good time to mention the following. In selecting your new cooktop, be sure that it is rated for the same power as your previous one. So in this case, the 30 amp double pole breaker was more than sufficient for the rating of this cooktop. Because if your new cooktop requires more power, it'll trip the breaker. And if it requires less power, that's a potential fire hazard because the breaker will be capable of supplying more power than the cooktop is rated for. And that's how you install a glass cooktop. Now that we're finished, allow me to tell you a cautionary tale so that you don't have to repeat my lesson here. Glass cooktops are fragile. In fact, they're probably my least favorite method of cooking. As such, if you're remodeling your kitchen, leave the glass cooktop for last. Why? I'll let the last minute or so of this video speak for itself. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yep, despite my best efforts. Why are we still here?